Hey, what up, y'all? It's Metaphor. Back for more. They kick the raw, representing everyone's you and I verse. We're gonna do a video on the moon and cancer. So the moon being in cancer is a cardinal water sign. So being initiating and creating upon one's way of emotions and feelings. So with one is initiating, creating emotion and feeling, it actually is at home here. So with the moon being at home here, um, it'll be um, a feeling that is already in comfort. If we're looking at a transiting chart, this is a time that either you feel completely comfortable or you could feel completely uncomfortable. And that's the way to find out if you're on the higher octave or the lower octave. For example, if we were looking at a moon in Capricorn, which would be opposite, we would say, okay, are you building? Are you um, initiating, creating a way of logistics and practicality? Are you making sense out of your emotions? And with the moon in Cancer, it's going to be, are you feeling the emotions? Are you in the emotional realm? Due to, um, <clears throat> due to being home here, you look at it like, okay, the emotions accumulate and it's in the water, so you can kind of gain a strength out of this emotional uh, realm. So if we're looking at it in the transiting uh, chart, we're looking at it outside of individual's natal chart, outside of someone's individual moon sign, we're looking at the collective moon sign, it'll be a time of initiating, creating an emotion. And whatever uh, emotion you initiate and create in, the, in this time will bring forth this uh, full moon in Leo. And you uh, really only got two and a half days. If you, if you ain't got it together by now, you know, you really got to get, uh, get things collected and get satisfied in your expression and your way of associating. So the full moon will be in Leo. So <clears throat> this is just, that's just a little tangent. But like I said, to break down the moon in Cancer, it's initiating, creating an emotion. So whatever emotion you initiate and create is the one that's going to be carried out throughout this uh, two-week full moon process. Um, it's like the moon in Leo is like when everything hits the fan, so to speak. When, I, when um, all the explosions happen, all the expression happens. Um, like you think about an explosion as like, wow, that's the center stage thing. You see, you see what I'm saying? Like a climax. So with the, the moon, I'm going to do the moon in Cancer first of the 12th house. So the first house is going to be a personal affair of an emotion that you've initiated and created. So an individual emotion that only you have. And it's either you feel comfortable with where you are personally and with what's uh, going on in your personal life and in your individuality. You're comfortable with yourself as an individual. This will be a higher octave of this first house in Cancer. So a Cancer rising dealing with this moon in Cancer. So what you want to do is initiate and create an emotion that will be able to carry you throughout this two weeks. And you can actually see yourself expressing yourself in this uh, feeling and emotion. So it's either you feel comfortable expressing one, uh, your individuality or you feel uncomfortable expressing your individuality. I would say if you feel uncomfortable expressing your individuality, the lower octave, you want to just, hey... Even if it's um, a little bit edgy in this, that, and the third, just express yourself and get those emotions purified. Do a little bit of baptizing, you know what I mean, in the esoteric realm, the mental realm, and the physical realm. So that in the esoteric realm means, you know, take your time to do some shadow work and actually look at your circumstance and what you're actually accumulating emotionally. In the mental realm, make sure you think the right thoughts to actually collect yourself and, you know, allow yourself to feel the right emotions due to those thoughts. And in the you know, actual physical realm, I'm talking about take a real good bath, clean yourself off, and get all those, you know, uh, you know, those old, old circumstances, old uh, states of being off of you. So that's the first house. The second house would be valuing an emotion. So initiating, creating the, uh, um, uh, the value in the emotional realm. So you're going to feel either on the higher octave, feel comfortable with what you value, or you feel on the lower octave, uncomfortable with what you value. If you're comfortable with what you value, you'll be able to express that emotion and actually say, hey, this is how I feel about what I've, um, you know, a value person, place, and things, and, you know, what I'm actually, objects I'm using to um, continue to, um, you know, um, bring myself to express myself now that, and that when I, like, look at it like the Leo's moon is going to uh, occur in the third house if you have a uh, cancer in the second house. <clears throat> so it'll be like, okay, I value this emotion, then we can bring it to the environment and express it. You see what I'm saying? So then the third house in uh, Cancer, this would be the environment. So 
Initiating create an emotion in your environment that you feel comfortable expressing on the higher octave, or you don't feel comfortable expressing the emotion that you've um, initiated and created <clears throat> in your environment. So this will be like one of those examples of hey, sometimes you got to be a little, bit, a little bit edgy, but express yourself and you know get that get that uh, get that shit out of there. Get that uh, you know what I mean get, get that emotion across, and then boom. If you know if it's not too malevolent, and um, it's it's gonna actually kind of benefit you a little bit by get the, getting this off your chest, do that. Getting it off your heart, do that. Okay, this will be the time to get rid of it in your environment. So either way, you want to express yourself. Even if, even if you do feel like, okay, this emotion is a little bit heavy. You know, I don't know if everybody's ready to feel this, but I got to initiate and create this emotion that I feel. Okay, we can get ourselves out of it. Now I can express how I got myself out of it. You see what I'm saying? So that'd be the um, <clears throat> moving into the fourth house, your private emotion. And that'd be uh, the moon in the fourth house with Leo. And the full moon will occur there. So we look at the actual fourth house for um, the Cancer Moon um, transiting here. This would be your Aries rising. So this will be initiating, creating an emotion that you feel comfortable expressing. This emotion is, okay, so this emotion is private, right? It's fourth house. It's um, a, a, like a light to the eighth house. It's a bit sacred, but it's like your home life and the emotions in your home and things that you are actually, you know, hold close to your heart and private to you. You're either going to feel comfortable expressing these emotions and actually saying like, oh, I feel good about, you know, what I've got going on in my home life and where I'm going. Or boom, on the opposite side, you feel uncomfortable expressing your home life and, you, you know, you're a bit damaged. You actually kind of want to do a little bit of shadow work and see, all right, which individuals can I actually, you know, bring with me to the top and actually um, express ourselves and bring it to that fifth house. And, what you know, who can I actually bring to the, isn't the same... Um, a like vibration or emotion, who can I actually bring with me to the top? You see what I mean? Who can I actually bring with me to express myself? And if you don't got anybody to express yourself, then hey, express that's your private emotion, and then boom, you'll be able to say, okay, I got out of this, this is my new expression, because I'm free from all these uh, other private emotions that I was going through. Cancer in the fifth house. This would be feeling comfortable with your expression, either feeling high octave, comfortable with your expression, low octave, uncomfortable with way your way of expression. So, if you're comfortable with your way of expression, okay, cool. Then keep on manifesting that and stay in that, um, stay in that uh, wave or tide or phase. Um, and with that, you want to actually continue to accumulate your expression and keep on expressing yourself. If it's bringing you benefits, if it's bringing you benevolent things and not so benefit uh, beneficial things, then you want to, you know, you see it as harmful expression then, okay, look, you need to see the way that you express yourself and say, okay, who, what is a, an outside influence that expresses themselves alike to me and how can I be opposite of that? You see what I mean? That's one way to look at it. How can I be more practical and be more logistical? So if, like, you're thinking about, okay, in my fifth house, it's not working out. What's an associate that I'm around that actually does bring logistics to practicality to um, their ways of expression? And, you know, you want to kind of compare and contrast. So it's either your expression, you feel comfortable with it, and you think it's a you know benefic beneficial expression for all parties, or hey, maybe you know you gotta do a little bit of Scorpio work. This is Scorpio rising, and you gotta kind of just keep your emotion to yourself and keep that um, that little crabby nature up and say like, hey, you know I'm on the the uh, lower octave of my expression right now, but I know that that's the reason why I need to just kind of stay low right now with this emotion. And whenever that um, the um, I'm part. I'm sorry. Th this isn't. I don't know if this is, this is a Scorpio rising, my bad, this is going to be the Pisces rising. It's going to be that, Pisces is alike to Scorpio though, so, you know, I'm getting it mixed up with my fault. So, with the Pisces, then having that in the fifth house, it'll be like, okay, do I actually want to be in, in this uh, emotion to actually bring it to, um, you know, the the, uh, the final, final, um, <laughs> like, do I actually want to bring that to a finality and put that on my schedule in my sixth house and actually have that Leo be expressed in the way of my pattern, the way, way of um, health and routine? Is this expression going to actually benefit me? You see what I'm saying? Is it going to benefit my routine or is it going to be um, harmful to my routine? So if it's on the, the lower octave, like I say, and it's harmful to your routine, you want to figure out a new way to ex um, initiate that feeling and expressing yourself and be maybe a bit more relatable and be a bit more adaptable to individuals and in the, their way of expression. And then boom, you can kind of, you know, bring that, um, that, that care to each other, be a little bit more caring 
in that in your way of expression instead of just saying i want to just achieve my dreams and that's it so that's why i'm going to express myself initiate my emotion that's it you see what i'm saying you want to initiate emotions around everyone else actually say okay we can benefit together so yeah that's the fifth house for cancer and then the sixth house in cancer is going to be the health routine and pattern like i said with the previous house and talking about the leo being there but now we're going to have the cancer being here and this would be for the um i'm pretty sure aquarius rising so you, you know just Sometimes I gotta count it out. I'm gonna keep it real. Aquarius first house, then you have Pisces um, second house, um, Aries third house, um, Taurus fourth house, and then Gemini fifth house, and then yeah, Cancer sixth house. So your routine and pattern and your way of health is initiating, creating a, a way of feeling. So you're gonna feel um, either feel comfortable initiating, creating this new pattern or this. Um, emotional way of you know like to say i have this emotion i can put it on a schedule and i actually feel it's a healthy emotion to partake in that's one way you could look at it like to say like okay i feel comfortable going to the doctor every two weeks this is an example like you know it's, it's a good one to give or your um family practitioner every two weeks i feel comfortable doing that in the cancer moon okay boom that's the higher octave you're able to put that on the routine and pattern think of that same exact circumstance in the lower octave uh, i know i need to get my health checked out but i don't really feel comfortable with it i don't know you know where i'm at with my health i mean i don't want to get let let know some bad emotion you know bad things things that'll make me feel bad you see what i mean i don't know if i can actually handle that um that you know a new routine and pattern and initiate and create a new feeling of how to actually get myself right and actually feel comfortable in my health and my way of uh conducting my patterns in life so then that'll then lead to okay do i actually see myself in the long term relating to my way of um, putting putting my health on a schedule and routine and pattern, do I you know that seventh house in Leo? You're gonna then express that <clears throat> that way of putting things on a schedule. So it's either you feel comfortable with expressing yourself, um, <clears throat> and you know you're actually gonna bring this this way that you conduct your health and your routine and pattern and, and your uh, schedule. You feel uncomfortable with the, the feeling about your routine and pattern, your health and schedule. So like I say, you need to just see what's more beneficial and what, what, um, what actually make you feel comfortable in your health. And actually, you know, like you may, not, you may have to go through an uncomfortable circumstance to actually find a way, a place of comfort and feeling healthy. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, that's the Aquarius rising. And then we have the Cancer in the seventh house. This would be Capricorn rising. You see what I'm saying? So I also, you see what I'm saying in that? And then to do a little tangent on the houses, you can look at it like, okay, yeah, actually I'm breaking them down one by one by one all the way to the, the 12 signs of the zodiac. We could also see like, okay, I have a misplaced house here, you know, kind of just displace. Okay, maybe you have cancer in the um, seventh house, but you have uh, Aquarius rising as well. You see what I'm saying? Just equate it a little bit differently in mind, just where that house is that and located and then also if you're missing cancer you want to see where cancer would fall in between those uh those two signs like say you had um <clears throat> uh leo uh sixth house and also a leo seventh house you see what i'm saying you want to see in which area in between it'd be in between that sixth and seventh house so you'd fall that's where your cancer would fall so like look at cancer where cancer would fall in between those two houses and kind of, kind of a little bit look like, okay, which part of the energy am I at right now? And then look until it transits into that next house. So I like to say it'd still be in that fifth house and then until it moves into the Leo sixth house. Like you can even think about it like this. If you had Gemini, Gemini, uh, actually it, it wouldn't really work out like that. My bad. So yeah, just look at your degrees and look at, um, you know, where things, uh, where things fall if there's actually not a cancer in your houses where the cancer would fall, like to say Gemini and Leo in between that is cancer. So if you had a, like I say, Gemini fifth house and then a Leo, six, uh, Leo sixth house and it skipped cancer, look in between those two houses and where your cancer is currently at. And like right before it answers that, um, that sixth house, it would still be in that Gemini fifth house and, you know, kind of share it with cancer, so to speak. So yeah, that's the end of that tangent. <laughs> now, like I say, look, go looking at your seventh house and, uh, uh, with um, cancer this would be feeling comfortable in your relationship relating to other people your actual thoughts and ways of communicating 
So you're comfortable with your ways of communicating and relating. That's the higher octave. Lower octave, you feel uncomfortable with your way of relating and you're actually bringing um, you know, your thoughts to the forefront. And it's like the opposite of the, the first house. So like your individuality and the other person's individuality, you see that you relate to them or you just want to be that individual and you, you're not so relatable. So it's like um, you want to initiate and create an emotion that's more relatable if you're on the lower octave. If you're on the higher octave and you're already relatable, <clears throat> just continue to manifest that emotion of relatability. In the eighth house, this would be secrets behind the behind the closet, you see what I'm saying? Behind the closet doors, <laughs> so to speak. This would be your sacred matters. So, and um, sex. So you could be initiating, create uh, an emotion in um, your, your um, behind the scenes nature. So, <clears throat> with this cancer here, the emotion that you initiate, you're going to end up rising from those emotions and create a phoenix in the ninth house and express, you know, what you just transformed. So, the eighth house is also transformation. So, do you want to transform an emotion? You see what I'm saying? It's an emotion that you already want to transform. You feel comfortable transforming, or it's a behind the scenes nature you're already comfortable with. You, you know, you just want to keep to yourself, and that's that's what you're going through right now. You feel comfortable with that, and you can actually kind of ex, you know be a little bit of expressive about it, but still keep it behind the scenes. You're on the lower octave. You feel completely uncomfortable with what you got going on behind the scenes. You know, you you're aware of your skeletons in your closet. You don't even want to look at them. You see what I'm saying? That's the way to look at the lower octave. And you're going through that. You got to become comfortable with um, what's behind the scenes and se secretive to you. And some things you actually do have to keep in the closet and maybe, you know, look at them and, you know, face those demons head on, but realize, okay, I, I gotta get through this um, through time, but face them head on, you know what I mean? It's like one day at a time, one step at a time, so to speak, so baby steps. Then you'll have that knowledge and wisdom about how to go it, go about it whenever the moon, you know, is full and, uh, Leo, and you'll say, okay, that's that's the way I should feel satisfied. If you don't, if I don't feel satisfied with um, what I've got behind the scenes, you know, this is what you got to deal with during the two two weeks of uh, the waning moon. <clears throat> so then, Cancer in the ninth house. This will be initiating, creating a feeling in your knowledge and wisdoms and ways of uh, transportation in the mind or actually in physical reality. So either you feel comfortable tra uh, doing. Um, any, any more of transportation, you, you know, you feel comfortable expressing those, uh, those ways of transportation, like, oh, yeah, you know, we can go over here, you know what I mean, we can, um, I, I care about what you got going on, so I'm going to take you to work, kind of thing, so to speak, like, we have this mode of transportation in the physical reality, in the mind, you have this way of feeling comfortable with being more open to other emotions, you know, initiating, creating a new way of, any, initiating, creating new emotions, upon knowledge and wisdom. So, you know, you have a bit more of an open mind on the higher octave. On the lower octave, you have a bit of a closed mind that knowledge and wisdom that um, you're initiating and creating isn't really something <clears throat> that you feel comfortable with. It's like, dag, this is like old outdated. So you have, you want to, you know, get up to date on your knowledge and wisdoms and your way of transportation. So maybe like, for example, like if you have an old outdated car, make sure you, you know, know how to take care of it. And that way you have a good modes of transportation. Even though it is outdated, you know how to you know, be up to date and taking care of it. So, so to speak, like check your oil, check your fluids, so to speak. You know, check your P uh, PSI and your tire, your pressure, uh, pressure um, gauge. And then boom, you'll be able to have this nice status. Say, okay, yeah, even though their, their car is a bit outdated, they still have a mode of transportation, they get to where they need to be. Or they have this knowledge of wisdom that they can express in any, uh, any platform and people can, you know, say like, oh, okay, yeah, I do care about that because they come across in a caring way as well. Like, I'm going to treat them how, they, how I want to be treated as well whenever going about my knowledge of wisdom. So, boom. You have this real good status. And um, this uh, emotion that you've created in your ninth house, you say, oh, I, I got a real good knowledge of wisdom. So, boom, I'm going to express it and have it as my status. So, it's either you want to kind of, like, you know, this is, this is the Scorpio rising with the ninth house here. This would be, you know, like I say, on the lower octave, <clears throat> you have a knowledge of wisdom that isn't so beneficial. And you actually need to shift it to uh, have a better status about you. Or you already have a knowledge of wisdom that is benefiting your status, and then boom, you express it. You see what I'm saying? So it's all about which uh, status you want to express. Real categorizing stuff. Real Scorpio stuff. Scorpio, know what I'm talking about. And then you think about 
Cancer in the tenth house. <clears throat> this would be initiating, creating a new status and a new feeling upon your status. So, are you going to say, I feel comfortable with what I've got going on in my blueprint and where I'm going with life, or I don't really feel comfortable with my status, what I've got going on in the forefront of life, my career, ah, it's not really moving anywhere, so, you know, my associations aren't really going to feel comfortable with me, express, you know, you know, see me, I can't really express um, with that full moon in 11th house, I don't feel satisfied expressing what I've, you know, what I've got going on in my associations. So, <clears throat> with the 10th the house here, you want to have a different status about it. So maybe that isn't so, you shouldn't care so much about your previous status and say, okay, I've got this new uh, status I'm going to feel comfortable about. And I feel like it's a good thing and it's helping me out. It's beneficial to me. So then boom, you have different associations as well. You might even express yourself in a different associative group due to you having this new feeling. So or this new, new feeling upon your status. So it's like, okay, this group I was associating before and expressing myself before, they didn't really appreciate where I was coming from in my actual career path. So then, you know, you, you want to switch that up and you've seen that happen in maybe even this last year, whenever we had the, uh, the full moon in Leo. You'll say, okay, these associates, um, I had to be on going on before, I need to have different associates, a, new, a different way to express myself, a new way to be on the stage. Whenever the moon is going to be full in your 11th house. So then, <clears throat> we think about the 11th house with Cancer. Like I was saying, the previous one, just to be clear, was I was talking about the 10th house in Cancer, then the full moon in the 11th house. So then this will be Cancer in the 11th house, and then full moon in the 12th house. So then your associations, um, your humanitarian, your, your way of being in a group, <clears throat> and that's going to say, do you feel, I mean, the moon <laughs> Cancer will say, do you feel comfortable, higher octave, um, expressing yourself in your groups or you feel uncomfortable expressing yourself in your groups. This is real simple. It's either you, um, you know, switch to a different group that'll make you feel more comfortable and then boom, you have better dreams. You know, you can actually, you know, see like, Oh, I see a future in this way. And, you know, there's actually a long-term way of expressing my dreams in this way with this group and compared to this group. You see what I mean? So just like, uh, figure out which group you feel more comfortable with and actually, is uh, more beneficial to you. If, and if you, like I say, if you're in the higher octave, you already got those groups of people around you that are um, beneficial to your your dreams, then boom, you know, you can be able to express your dreams all day. Everybody gonna appreciate that. So then think about the Cancer being in the 12th house, last but not least. This would be com feeling comfortable with your dreams or loses the nightmares. So if you're comfortable with your dreams and you know, what you see a bit is like shooting for the star, you're grasping for it, you know, you see like, okay, this could actually go somewhere, you know, there's such a future to this, I'm like the, one of the one of the first people in this space, this, that, and the third, that's the higher octave. You feel comfortable with your dreams. Maybe it's a little bit of loose story to others, but you see where you're going. And that's the higher octave, you want to keep on expressing those dreams. The lower octave was, is, ah, man, I have these dreams, but I don't really feel comfortable with them. I don't care about what I got on my illusionaries. You know, I may, I don't care that I look a loose story. You know, what I got going on, it doesn't really matter. You see what I mean? This is not the third. <laughs> that would be that lower octave. So it would be like, okay, well then have dreams that you do care about. Figure out what dream, you know, put on the pros and cons of what's best for you. And you know what I mean? What actually benefits you. And then put those dreams on, you know, the forefront. And then have this new person, you'll have this new way of personally, um, expressing yourself. This is the Leo rising. So whenever the moon will be full, full and um, Leo, you'll have this way, you'll be satisfied with your way of expression because you initiated and created this dreamlike nature that you feel comfortable with. You see what I'm saying? So that's the way to get to the higher octave with the cancer in the 12th house. So much love and holla back. Peace.